In this Godot recipe, we'll look at how to make a 2D top-down car controller. So here's our car, and we want it to move in a somewhat realistic manner. So let's start first by talking about what not to do. A lot of beginners, when they first start working on a car, will rotate the car around its center like this. So when you try and turn, the car rotates around its center. But that's not how cars work, right? If you did this, then the back wheels would be sliding sideways along the ground. The way a car works is that the front wheels are the only ones that turn and the rear just sort of follows along. So in, instead of this motion, which we, when you move forward would make you go that way, what we want to do if you're turning is you should go that way. Now there are a lot of approaches to coding your car physics and they mainly depend on how realistic you want them to be how much detail you want to include. For this solution, we're going to go for more of an arcade level of realism. So we're not going to worry about a lot of the fiddly little details. We just want a fun, steerable car that we can drive around the track. And so we're going to prioritize the action over the realism. But that doesn't mean we can't incorporate a little bit of real world physics in our simulation. And so the approach we're going to take is following this article on engineering.net, which I highly recommend reading. It's very short. It literally is six lines of code to handle your car steering. And the way it works is you basically simulate the wheels, but we only need to simulate two wheels. And so this is called a, a bicycle simulation. So instead of doing all four wheels, we're just going to have one front wheel and one rear wheel. And the front wheel can turn, the real wheel cannot, and they will both move forward in the direction they're pointing. So back over to our car, what that is going to look like is this. So this is this would be the wheel locations, and when you turn, the front wheel will turn or not, and that will guide the car in the direction that it's supposed to go. All right, here's our car scene. I've got a sprite here of the car. I've got a collision shape. I'm going to use a capsule shape because that will allow the front to be a little bit curved and so if you run up against a wall you'll be able to kind of turn along it and not get stuck by a sharp corner. And then we're also going to add a camera so that the camera will follow the car as we drive around and we can also put a little bit of zoom on here. I'm going to put two to zoom out a little bit and give us a, a view of the course ahead of us. So let's start talking about how we're going to script this. And I'm going to break this down into multiple steps. So we're going to do this one part at a time. And each of these parts is somewhat optional. And you can mix and match to get the kind of car behavior you want. But we need to start with movement. So a couple things we need to define. One is the wheelbase. That's how far apart the two wheels are. Right? What's the distance between the two wheels? And this is going to be based on your sprite. And then there's the steering angle. That's how far does your front wheel turn when you turn when you press the turn button. Now, we're going to be doing keyboard controls here. So you're either turning or you're not. So you push the right arrow or the D button and your wheel turns to the right. And this is how far it's going to turn. If you're using an analog stick, you can have this vary based on how far you push the stick. Uh, but that will be something for another video. So this is going to be, we're going to call this 15 degrees. Then we're going to have our velocity vector. And we're going to have our steering direction. What direction are we turning in? And this could be, in this case, 0, positive 15, or negative 15, if we're turning left or right. That'll be calculated based on our input. And so then we're going to have our physics process. In the physics process, we want to get our input, which we'll write a separate function for. We're going to calculate our steering, which we'll also write a function for. And then we'll use that to set the velocity. And then we'll call move and slide with that velocity. So let's start with get input. 
way that get input is going to work is we need to determine whether we're turning or not. So we might be going forward. If we're not pressing any key, turn is going to be zero. And then if we press the keys. Now I'm going to use, I've set up actions for these. And they are steer left and steer right. And I've mapped them to the arrow keys and the WASD keys so that you can use uh, whichever one you want. So we do that, and then we'll do the same thing for steering left. Steering left is going to be negative one. And then now we know our steer angle, or sorry, our steer direction is that value times the steering angle. So we'll have a plus 15 or a minus 15 based on which key we press. And our velocity, we also need to set to zero to determine whether we're moving or not. And if we've pressed accelerate, which is our forward button, then we'll set the velocity equal to transform.x, which is our forward vector, times whatever speed. I'm just going to put 500 here because we're going to come back and change this in a few minutes. Uh, I just want to put something there temporarily to test it out and make sure that we can turn. Now we'll talk about calculating the steering. And this is the algorithm from that website, which is linked below as well if you want to go read the details. So the first thing we need to do is figure out what's the location of the front and rear wheels. Well, the rear, rear wheel is at our position, whatever the position of the car is, minus transform.x times wheelbase over two. Right, half the wheelbase, it's half the wheelbase behind the car's position. The car's position is the center of the sprite. And then the front wheel is just the opposite. All right. So right now that's where the wheels are located. And then they're going to move by moving forward at the velocity. So rear wheel, we add our velocity times delta. That's how far the rear wheel moved forward this frame. And then the front wheel, we need to pass in delta to this. So when we call Calculate steering, we need to press, pass in delta so that we can calculate the frame movement. Now the front wheel goes forward by the velocity, but it needs to be rotated by the steer direction times delta. Let's give ourselves a little space there. So now we know that how far the rear wheel moved forward and how far the front wheel moved forward. And now they're going to be in different places, right? So they have now become offset. So we have a new heading, a new direction that we're facing. And that new heading is just the front wheel minus the rear wheel location. And I'm going to normalize it. So that's our new direction that we're pointing. And our velocity should now be changed to that. So we take our new heading, keep the length. And then we want to rotate the sprite as well to, to point in the same direction. So let's try this out. I've created a world scene here, which is a tile map that's got some a course laid out here with a big open area and some tracks for us to drive along. And I've added the car to it. So let's try this out. And now if I press forward, the car moves forward. And if I press turn, the car turns. Now we're turning really sharply. Ah, I know why. So over here, we got a mistake here. I put steering angle 15 degrees. Since this is a human readable angle, uh, it's useful to use degrees. But the car in the code is going to use radians. So this needs to be deg to rad. There we go. And that's going to be a little better. Yeah. So now you see we're turning. We have a turning radius. And then when I let go, we just instantly stop. And that's because we have not 
implemented any kind of acceleration. So our speed is constant. And that will be the next part. All right, so let's add a new setting variable up here called engine power. And that will let us make cars accelerate quickly or slowly. And then we'll need a variable to track that. It's going to be our acceleration. And that's also a vector 2. And now we're going to use that acceleration when we calculate our movement. So in our physics process, we're going to set acceleration equal to 0 each frame before we calculate it. In our get input, we're not going to be doing velocity anymore. We're going to be doing acceleration. And we're setting that equal to whatever the engine power is. And then in our physics process now, we've calculated the steering. We've got what our acceleration is. We can set our velocity based on that. Add our acceleration to our velocity. And we should be good. So let's take a look at that. So now you can see I come up to speed. But now I'm going to continue to get faster and faster. I'm not accelerate. I'm not holding the accelerate button anymore because we don't have anything slowing us down. We need some kind of friction force to slow us down. So cars experience two kinds of friction or two kinds of negative forces that slow them down. There's friction, which is the force against the ground. So if you're driving on sand, friction is high. If you're driving on ice, friction is low. But then there's also drag, and drag is the wind resistance, and that's based on the cross-section of the car, right? A big square truck has a higher drag than a sleek racing car. And so we're going to do both of those. And the other thing that those buy us is those are going to also give us a maximum speed. They're going to give us a point where the engine power can't accelerate anymore against the force of the friction. So we're going to have a friction force and the friction is going to be the amount that we're slowed down by the ground. So I'm going to set that to 0.9 and it's negative because it's in the, going to be in the reverse direction that we're going and drag. And drag is going to be a very small number. And the reason drag is a very small number is that friction is based on your velocity. The faster you're going, the higher the friction force. Drag is based on the square of your velocity. So when you're moving at a slow speed, friction is going to be more significant. But when you're moving at a high speed, drag quickly becomes more significant than friction. And that's going to really be what determines your maximum speed. So in our physics process, after we get input, we can apply friction. And we will write our function for that. And this is not too complicated what we have to do is first friction is going to be slowing us down right and that means that when we get to a really low speed it's just going to continually be decelerating it so we could be moving at a very very slow speed and we don't want that at a certain point you have to just stop so if our velocity length is less than five five is a pretty small number then velocity dot uh, should be equal to vector two dot zero, and that's just so that we don't have a speed of you know point oh 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 one and then oh 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 one and so forth. And friction force it, that we're going to calculate now is equal to velocity times friction. Right, friction is negative, so it's going to be a force opposite the direction we're going. And then the drag force, similarly is velocity, but we also need to multiply the velocity by the velocity length because it's that'll give us a force proportional to the velocity squared times whatever our drag factor is. And then we set our acceleration based on that. Acceleration, we add the drag force and we add the friction force. And that should do it. So let's try that out here. And now you can see me coming up to speed. And then when I let go, I coast to a stop. And I'm going to hold down accelerate. And you can see I've reached a maximum speed now. I can't go any faster than I'm going right now.
Now we're going to talk about brakes, applying the brakes so that we can slow down and also so that we can reverse. And we're going to set braking. That's the kind of like engine power. That's how quickly the brakes will reduce your speed. So that's a deceleration. And then I'm also going to set a max speed reverse that is not as high as the forward speed is going to be. So we shouldn't be able to go maximum speed in reverse. And so now we have those. We're going to, in our get input, we're going to check for that input as well. So if, if we're pressing the brake input, then our acceleration needs to be transform.x times braking. And then that will slow us down, but it's not going to let us go in reverse, which you'll see if we try here. If I press the brake, see, I came to a stop really fast, but I'm holding down brake and I'm only kind of creeping backwards. And that's not great because it's still trying to decelerate us, but we want it to move us backwards. So here in our calculate steering, we're figuring out our new heading. And our new heading is a vector pointing forward. And when we're accelerating, those two vectors are in the same direction. But when we're going in reverse, we want to go opposite the direction of the heading. And so to fix that, we need to figure out whether we're trying to go opposite or same direction as our new heading. And we can do that with the dot product. So the dot product of our new heading with our velocity is going to give us a value between 1 and negative 1. A value greater than 0 is a vector pointing in the same direction. So if d is greater than 0, then we're going forward. That's what we were doing before. But if we get a value of d that's less than 0, that means we're trying to go in reverse. So we want our velocity to be opposite the new heading. And we we're going to multiply that by the minimum of velocity.length max speed reverse and so that way we can't go faster than the reverse speed and so that should let us go in reverse so now if I press reverse I'm going backwards and that'll let us get out of those situations where we run into the wall and we can reverse out so one last thing we want to do here I know this is getting to be a little bit long is we want to talk about drifting or sliding and so the way it works right now is that we, when we turn, we are instantaneously changing our velocity to the new heading. But above a certain speed, we want that to take longer. There needs to be some sliding happening to, till we can reach our new turning velocity. And so we're going to set that up here. We're going to set a couple of variables, one called slip speed. This is the speed above which you start sliding. And then we're going to have a traction fast, which is how slippery it is when you're above that speed, and a traction slow, which is what it is when you're below it. So when you're going slowly, right, if, if either of these are 1.0, then it's going to be what we have right now. And so we could set this, you know, to, to two different values based on your speed. And so down here, what we're going to do is we're going to set that traction to the traction slow unless we're above the certain speed so but if velocity dot length is greater than slip speed then traction should be traction fast and then what that means is here we're going to change this so that our velocity is now going to linear interpolate to that new heading based on our traction. And let's take a look at what that looks like when we run it. So now when I get going to a high speed, you see how I'm sliding around? But when I get to a low speed, I'm turning a little more, I'm turning consistently. But when I get up to that high speed, I start sliding. So that about does it for the car steering. I hope this was helpful to you. 
there are a lot of settings to adjust with all the traction and the friction and so on. So if you download the attached project, I have added a control panel, which you can enable with tab, which will let you adjust all of these settings. So you can see as I'm driving around, I can change the traction and be no sliding or lots of sliding. And you can, you know, you can change all these different values, increase the engine power, decrease the engine power, and so on. And hopefully that'll help you find whatever settings you need for your particular style of game. Thanks for watching. Please ask your questions in the comment section below. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will see you in a future video. This tutorial is part of my new Godot Recipes website. The goal is to collect all the best tips and lessons to help make you a better Godot developer. If you like this video, I hope you'll go and check out the site. And make sure to hit subscribe so you'll be notified whenever I release new videos. Thanks for watching.